to, to have a lecture, to have a lecture of Dr. Yanis Zarakas from University of Athens. Yes, and I apologize for two minutes late, to be two minutes late, but we shall hear here. So please begin. We are no song tutorial, as they say. Switch <laughs> off you. your phone. Uh -huh. <laughs> and why to switch? Your phone. You are by phone? You were no. speaking with Alyosha. No, 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 no. Uh, 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 yes, with Alyosha. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I just. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Shalemsky. Um, I would like to start by thanking very much the organizers, Professor Shalemsky, Professor uh, Pirkowski, yes. uh, yeah. for inviting me to give this uh, this talk to to, this, to your seminar today. It's been a great pleasure for me. Okay. Um, so uh, I will be sharing my screen now, I'm just trying to find the uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Just give me one minute to find. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. I think now we should be uh, looking at the presentation at the slides. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to make it bigger for me. Okay, the uh, the title uh, of uh, today's uh, of my today's uh, presentation is uh, derivations of generalized B-star algebras. Uh, so uh, the results that uh, are going to I'm going to talk about is uh, with uh, joint work with uh, Dr. Veit from uh, uh, University of uh, Port Elizabeth now. Um, okay, so starting with um, with the topic, uh, of course, I'm going to, to to take the first word of the of the title and uh, just to give us a very very common ground. We are going to talk about derivations, which means in a purely algebraic uh, aspect, uh, uh, we have a bimodal uh, x over an algebra and a linear map going from the algebra to the uh, to the module, satisfying the well-known Leibniz uh, rule. Okay, if we have, if we are happy and uh, lucky to have an element of the bimodule uh, such that uh, the image of the derivation is I'm the... sorry, but we do not see the presentation. At okay. least I, I... I don't see it. Okay, uh, is the same uh, happens for everybody? Yeah, also yes. for me, I don't see the presentation. Yes. No, we can see only, only the file tree or at, or at your computer, but not the presentation. Okay, thank you for telling me. I thought, okay, I'm going to resolve the issue. Uh, perhaps now you see the presentation or not yet? No, not yet. Not yet, actually. Why? Hmm. Oh. Okay, now it is. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for taking yeah. Over uh, here. So as I was um, uh, as I was uh, talking uh, before, um, derivations means in a pure algebraic aspect a linear map from a, an algebra to a bimodule. Uh, we, such that, of course, the the linear map uh, on every product of two elements A and B satisfies the Leibniz rule. And if we, if we have a commutator x times alpha, if there is an element x from the module such that uh, our, our map delta on alpha is the commutator x comma alpha, of course, we're talking uh, of innerness uh, uh, as a property of our derivation. We say that our derivation is inner. 
Now, it may happen that um, we are going to talk about derivations in, in, in locally convex algebras. So uh, in, the, in, the, in the setting of a topological star algebra, in general, our derivation, our linear map, uh, is uh, from a densely defined domain d delta mapping to the algebra. The first, uh, let's say, um, um, part of the topic would will deal uh, with derivations having domain the whole algebra, while in the second half of the topic we are going to talk about some results when our derivation is in the kind described here, meaning having densely defined domain. If we are uh, in the um, involution uh, in in the involution setting if our algebra has an involution our derivation would be star if it respects if uh, the, uh, the 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 derivation delta respects the involution in this sense of course okay so this is purely algebraic and topological uh, as far as the um, definition of derivation which is well known uh, is regarded now I, I will start by um, giving a window of um, how one can um, look at derivations in a natural setting via the Heisenberg commutation relation. And I will do so, of course, because it is well known to all of us, but also because I think it is interesting in connecting the derivation to a particular um relation very important relation which is this heisenberg commutation relation commutator of a and b to be the h constant Planck plank times uh, one minus i h times one okay and one here when seeing this um, heisenberg commutation relation has two natural i could say questions the first one is if this commutation relation can be realized through via finite matrices. In this top, in this setting, of course, it was Villand and Wittner which said that no, you cannot have the uh, Heisenberg commutation relation realized in the Banach algebra ambient, in the Banach algebra setting. And it is nice to just uh, remind ourselves of uh, the very elegant and uh, uh, perhaps uh, easy but uh, very nice result, which says that if we have a bounded derivation on a Banach algebra, such that uh, the, the result that there are no elements A and B in the Banach algebra realizing the uh, Heisenberg commutation relation is based on the fact that if we have a bounded derivation on the Banach algebra such that delta square is zero on alpha, on an element of alpha, then this delta alpha would be generalized nilpotent in this sense. And a direct proof of this, which is very easy, but still eloquent argument, is um, an inductive argument based on this uh, nice property here, which I mark with two uh, red uh, exclamation marks. So coming back to the, uh, to the Heisenberg commutation relation, if I had two elements A, B from the Banach algebra, realizing it, the commutation of them to be one, realizing the, uh, the Heisenberg relation, then we would have a derivation delta alpha bounded on A and such that delta alpha square on B equal with zero. Of course, that would result in the, uh, the fact that delta alpha B would be generalized in the product, which which cannot be since delta alpha of B is one. Hence, eloquent and uh, direct argument that convince us that we cannot work with uh, with operators from with so, I'm sorry with elements from a Banach algebra in realizing the uh, this relation. So we have to go to the unbounded uh, uh, case, and uh, a realization of the Heisenberg relation with unbounded operators is just brief briefly uh, noting that can be realized when we're working in L2 of 0, 1 and taking as operators alpha to be the multiplicate operator uh, with F1 to be the, the function F1 of S equals S and the B operator would be just the derivative of every function F whose domain 
of definition, the domain of definition of this B, would be all continuous, uh, all functions, uh, complex values function zero one, having continuous derivative and taking the same values on the edges of the interval. So as we can all see, uh, alpha is bounded operator, multiplicate operator F1, and B is unbounded and densely defined. Hence, the um, derivation topic is um, given through this window and convinces us to, uh, to delve into some uh, very famous results. I, I will briefly um, just um, make a revision of famous results concerning derivations in Banach algebras and uh, sister algebras, um, because I would like them to uh, just uh, be the impetus to, to the continuation of my uh, presentation to the GB star algebra setting. So celebrated singer Vermeer theorem, uh, which tells us that for commutative Banach, commutative Banach algebras and bounded derivations, we all know that these derivations map into the radical. And here we had the uh, famous singer Vermeer conjecture, which said that, um, which was resolved by Thomas in the in the eighties, if I recall well, and said that this happens for every derivation, either bounded or not, in a commutative Banach algebra, which means that its image would map into the radical of alpha. Something that I note in the next slide. So it was Thomas who's proved this uh, this uh, commutative uh, singular Vermeer conjecture. Now. Um, I'm just keeping the details here. Of course, if we are in a semi-simple, in a non-semi-simple Banach algebra, because if we are in a semi-simple Banach algebra from the previous result, we know that our derivation would map into the radical, hence being zero. Outside the semi-simple Banach algebra setting, of course, one can find uh, derivations which are not zero. And an easy example, just I stated it, uh, it is in the bibliography, uh, it is well known. It is the Newman example, which says that if we have the, the B algebra L1 uh, N alpha, which is the functions summable with respect to a weight alpha N uh, positive sequence, satisfying these uh, properties here, then in this algebra, which is far from being semi-simple, uh, on the contrary, the radical is the whole of L, the whole B, uh, we can have examples by taking different um, sequences alpha n as a alpha blue and b red uh, point out, uh, different sequences alpha n and finding derivations on this um, algebra b, which are non-zero and also another derivation in b red, which is zero. So in the non-semi-simple Banach algebra setting, of course, we can have non-zero derivations. Now, when one passes from the Banach algebra setting to the sister algebra setting, of course, we have deep and very, um, uh, very uh, well-known and famous results, which says that uh, the singer, of course, theorem in the commutative sister algebra uh, A, uh, you cannot have, you cannot expect any other derivation than the zero one. Um, now, of course, someone would say that, okay, if, we, if I am in the, if I have a bounded uh, here derivation, I can, I can say that I know that from the singular Vermeer theorem before. Sorry. Yet, chronologically, it wasn't exactly the, this order that the results were proved. Um, later on, Sakai proved that when you are in a sister algebra, either commutative or not, you will have continuity, you will have boundedness of your derivation for sure granted. So this is a very also uh, deep result, which resolves the issue of uh, the issue of boundedness, the issue of continuity in a derivation of a sister algebra. Uh, and here I must mark that, I must note that we have a derivation defined on the whole algebra. So Welte's derivation from A as the domain of definition. Okay. Um, now, if if we go a little one step further, one um, in our ladder, um, we will find the uh, topic of a W star algebra, 
And um, then it was Sakai and Cadison which said that in this setting, in a W star algebra setting, you will have an inner derivation. Every derivation will be inner in the sense that we discussed before and we know there is an element of the algebra, of the Abbean algebra M, such that your derivation is inner. This uh, result of Sakai and Cadison, which is a result for, for Neumann algebras, for W star algebras, tells us as a corollary that if we have a C star algebra, which we know that um, uh, leads into the advent of uh, uh, the bounded operators on a Hilbert space H, then our derivation alpha, uh, any derivation delta on, on a sister algebra would be spatial, as we say, meaning that we will have an element from the for Neumann, from the envelope, enveloping for Neumann algebra, the word closure of alpha, which makes our derivation uh, delta, uh, delta of x to be the commutant alpha, the, the commutator, so, I'm sorry, alpha comma x. So our derivation of the sister algebra will be spatial. These are the common ground, if I can, uh, if I can say so, uh, of results which were the first, um, the, the cornerstones of, uh, uh, of what uh, of what we know, of course, a, a, a very small part, but it was the the the, the cornerstones, the first results, which uh, marked the uh, the field concerning derivations on C star algebras, Banach algebras, and and C star algebras. If we go uh, into the locally m convex um, setting, we have the theorem of Carpenter, which says that for a locally m convex algebra. A semi simple commutative Fresset M convex algebra, and continuity is uh, automatic for every derivation in A. Now, I, I just here um, noted down some basic ingredients. I'm not going to, uh, to, 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 to talk about them, but just uh, showing them. I would just like to point out something which is of particular importance since we are in a Fresset M convex algebra. We have this uh, famous um, uh, arendt michael decomposition of alpha, which helps us a lot um, in many situations when we have M convexity. And uh, it will be proven useful for our purposes later on, as we shall see also. So this is a, a result which talks about the continuity of derivation in commutative semi-simple present convex algebra. Um, last. I noted down a Reed's um, construction. It was uh, later on uh, in, in, in his paper Reed uh, around, uh, I think, 2000, where he um, found out an example of a, a Fresset M convex algebra. Uh, particularly, he regarded Vita to be the power series in uh, infinitely many non commuting um, variables. And for this um, algebra, he, um, he constructed a very peculiar, a, a very bizarre topology, which is the uh, last uh, to, to one point here. This is the topology that he gave for every element of the uh, algebra. Okay, and uh, in this topology, via these seminorms, alpha n uh, superscript m, which is uh, written here, he found out that um, this Fresem convex algebra is far from being continuous, as we see in the last bullet. Um, and how he proved that? But by considering the very, very simple partial derivative with respect to the first variable x is x naught, for which we see that um, this derivation is uh, discontinuous. And uh, besides that, uh, its, uh, its separating space is very large. It has one inside its separating space. Okay. So this construction of Reed, which, which was very, very um, geniusly uh, constructed, um, gave um, a clear sight that um, in Fresset uh, M convex uh, uh, algebras, the situation may be distinctively different from the Banach algebra setting. It was one paper who uh, initiated this um, difference, uh, if, if I may so, say so. Uh, so with this uh, slide, I briefly uh, um, 
went through some uh, well-known basic results. And um, now I'm going to introduce us to the ABN that we're going to work, to the ABN that it is the algebras that we, we are dealing with. And uh, these are the uh, generalized B-star algebras, G-B-star algebras for, uh, for short, in short, which are algebras uh, in a kind, we can say, between C-star algebras in the sense that they contain, and we will see in which exactly sense they contain a C-star algebra. And of course, they are generally locally convex algebras. Having very particular futures though, which I am now going uh, to describe in this slide. So as you see, we are talking about uh, a topological algebra alpha. And for this algebra, we are uh, focusing our interest in a particular collection of sets. This collection, which uh, uh, I am uh, writing with this B calligraphic, uh, is a collection of sets which, ha which have the following um, conditions, which satisfy the following conditions. First, here in this B calligraphic, we are gathering all closed bounded and absolutely convex sets of our algebra alpha, which further on contain each one of them, the identity, they are submultiplicative, and they are self-adjoint in the sense that B star equals with B, where B star contains the uh, adjoints of, um, uh, of X. Now, this is a collection of sets. For every such B from this collection, we can form the algebra AB, which is that which is thus the uh, L times X for L complex number and X an element from the set B. And this is an algebra with respect to the Minkowski function. Now, the notion of boundedness it is natural to say that an element is uh, uh, bounded whenever this set here is bounded with respect to the topology of our algebra. Now, the set of all bounded elements, as we shall uh, see in various instances later on, will be called by this uh, sub uh, with this letter A naught. So, generally, this is the uh, notion, the ambient of these uh, algebras, of the GB star algebras. As a, as a starting point. Now, the definition, after having defined these, uh, these collections, tells me, tells us that the JB star algebras that we're going to work with are locally convex. And with this, uh, I would like here to state that there are JB star algebras non locally convex, yet we are going to focus our interest on locally convex algebras with unit, such that the previous family B calligraphic has a greatest a greatest member with respect to inclusion, call it B0. Secondly, these algebras are symmetric in this sense that the inverse, this inverse belongs to uh, the uh, A0, the bounded elements. And the third crucial condition is that the AB0, the algebra that we have defined before, the AB0 is complete. The, this is the definition of a GB star algebra. Uh, GB star algebras first uh, were defined by uh, Allen, and uh, I think it was uh, in the 60s, then studied further and uh, enriched in, in their properties by his uh, uh, pupil, uh, Dixon. So the, the proposition that Alan here uh, provides us is, and uh, I said before that they are very close to sister algebras, in, in exactly this uh, sense, that the algebra AB0 is a sister algebra. Its unit ball is B0, and every inverse 1 plus x star x belongs to this uh, sister algebra AB0, something that will help us a lot in our calculations with derivations later. Uh, so that that, that is the uh, definition and the proposition that comes together and gives us a clear picture of what a GB star algebra is. Now, as for examples, one can find uh, for the first one, uh, every process star algebra with unit. Um, with a process star algebra, I'm just uh, repeating, uh, I think, common uh, ground here, but yet we are dealing with complete algebra with seminorms P which are C-star seminorms in this sense. 
The AB node that we were uh, discussing before in this setting, in the, in the process algebra setting, is just all elements of, of the algebra with whose uh, su the, the supreme of their seminorms is finite. Um, this, I, again, another example, the second example here that I have noted is the RNS algebra, lambda omega of zero one, all LP zero one, uh, functions uh, LP zero one, and we take uh, um, the intersection of them, the topology is the natural one, all the P norms, and this is a G B star algebra lambda omega with a b not to be the von Neumann algebra L zero as uh, I'm sorry L infinity zero one. Uh, and the last example I noted uh, in purpose, and uh, we'll see why. Uh, if we are starting with a norm closed star sub algebra of B of H H a Hilbert space, and we take and we equip uh, our algebra alpha with the semi norms. Peak psi comma eta, which are here here defined, and like the uh, what topology in a sense, we are um, having in our hands a G B star algebra with a b not alpha. Now the, this last example has to do with the representation, in fact, of the G B star algebras, which is what I have noted in the next slide. Uh, we would like to to give a picture of how these objects are represented. And since I talked before, and I, um, I noted particularly that uh, in the GP star algebras, we are very interested in the C star algebra that they contain, um, it is natural to expect that the representation of these uh, objects of the GP star algebras will have a lot to do with the representation of the underlying C star algebra, and indeed, we have this uh, theorem from Allen, which tells us that in the commutative setting, we will have the commutative setting, then uh, the Gelfand isomorphism of the AB naught of the sister algebra AB naught, which as we know is the, con the um, continuous functions on the um, um, spectrum uh, multiplicative linear functionals of, uh, uh, of the algebra, this Gelfand Neimark isom this Gelfand isomorphism can be extended to alpha to the whole algebra alpha. Mm -hmm. Algebraically, though, we have an algebraic isomorphism of alpha onto a star algebra of functions over M naught, the spectrum of AB naught. But what is the crucial difference is that the um, functions now, which are algebraic stereomorphic to alpha, can take the value infinity. Yet this is done only on at most nowhere dense subset of M naught. So this gives us a picture of how GB star algebras are represented in the commutative uh, setting. Uh, as far as the non-commutative case is concerned, um, I am uh, noting here in this bullet that one can have a representation, of course, uh, of non-commutative GB star algebras through the well-known uh, GNS construction that we have for sister algebras. For example, the same works here, the same up to a point though, which means the following. The first, um, uh, the, the, the first um, point here is we are studying common ground, positive linear functional f on alpha, taking the um, alpha modulo nf, where nf is this uh, set, and taking the inner product coming from the linear function f. Mm -hmm. Taking the linear, uh, sorry, the inner product of the quotient kappa uh, f. Now, we can define an operator pf uh, of x on any such uh, uh, term here via the well-known uh, multiplication. And this would be then easily, we can gather all pf to the uh, to the sum and kappa to be the direct sum of kappa f. I'm recalling that kappa f are the quotients of alpha uh, modulo nf, and we are having a faithful representation of alpha. Kappa is a pre-Hilbert space with inner product that we saw before. Uh, I'm sorry, we saw before for every uh, for every kappa f for the whole kappa. This is the inner product the inner product that, that we define. Okay, taking the sum of the inner products of kappa f. So we have it, we having this direct sum P, 
uh, which represents alpha into a star algebra of uh, uh, operators on the pre-Hilbert space kappa. And now up to here, one and two is the same exactly, GNS construction for sister algebras. The difference here comes in point three, because in sister algebras, we know that we can take from kappa, complete it, take a, a Hilbert space H. No worry, because bounded operators on kappa will give us bounded operators on H. And this is the, the, the difference here in point three, because we have here in kappa possibly unbounded operators. So we, can know, we cannot uh, ex exactly take the same route. We have to be uh, careful. And Talon says that, the, uh, sorry, uh, Dixon says here that the representation uh, P prime, which concludes the, the picture, would be the closure of P of X. Mm -hmm. So Dixon says us that when you have a G star algebra, either commutative or non-commutative, you can faithfully represent it on a star algebra of closed operators on a Hilbert space with common dense domain. What we have here in this theorem of Dixon is that a G star algebra is an extended sister algebra. In which sense? In the sense that we have, I'm sorry, uh, in the sense that, uh, uh, as we saw before, we have an algebra of closed operators with common dense domain whose bounded part is a sister algebra. This is exactly what an extended sister algebra is. And now we can go the other way also. We can conversely say, and this is proven also by Dixon, that if you start from an extended sister algebra with a common dense domain, then you can equip it, you can endow it with a locally convex GB star topology such that the greatest member B naught would be alpha one with alpha one. I am noting the unit ball of alpha. Okay, the notions of, um, uh, of the um, star algebra alpha of closed operators, the operations are summation and product, closures of them, and extended would be if, as I said before, the bounded part in the sense intersecting with the bounded operators on H is a sister algebra. The topology with which we, we equip, with, we endow uh, the, sister, the extended sister algebra to make it a GB star algebra is this one, is the topology uh, of the semi-norms, the weak operator topology. Uh, uh, oh, these are the semi-norms which give us the locally convex uh, GB star topology on A. So uh, uh, thinking about GB star algebras actually is thinking about extended sister algebras, which means uh, algebras which which have uh, which have a, a dense sister algebra inside them, but may have also uh, unbounded operators adjoined. And I am quoting this eloquent phrase from Dixon's paper to describe how exactly one can visualize uh, these, um, these objects. Of course, in, in mathematical concrete terms, uh, everything is, this, is, is described through the representation theorems that we saw before. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, we are going to talk about, um, we are going to talk about some results concerning derivations on these, uh, on these um, algebras, on GV star algebras. Um, our first natural question when we dealt with these uh, algebras is if um, the same result that we saw uh, for, cis, for cis algebras uh, also holds here in this setting. Uh, meaning, if in a commutative GB star algebra, we have only the zero derivation. So a partial, uh, a partial answer was provided uh, in, the, in the extract uh, Mathematica paper uh, some time ago, uh, and partial because uh, we were able to show that for um, commutative, uh, complete commutative GB star algebra with jointly continuous multiplication, yes, we cannot expect to have nothing more than the zero derivation. Uh, the partiality of the result, of course, comes from the fact that we were constrained to uh, 
to, to, to suppose that the uh, the module act, sorry the multiplication is jointly continuous uh, I briefly um, written down some points some bullet points here just a sketch of the proof since we we have I think the uh, ambient of the seminar uh, gives us the opportunity to, to just discuss them um okay so we started from the fact that we have sister algebra in our hands, densely defined in a GB star algebra, so uh, focus on it because we know things about it. Focus on it means take the derivation and constrain and um, take the and restrict it to AB naught. Okay, so uh, of course it is easy to show that uh, this is also a derivation from AB naught in 12. The crucial part here is about the topology. Uh, and uh, this is described in the second bullet, which means that alpha, the whole algebra alpha, can be seen to be a complete locally convex AB0 by module. It is clearly a, a locally convex AB0 by module, and the module actions, norm times tau to tau, are jointly continuous. Now, this is easy, uh, quite easy to, to do. We have here now um, a, a gain, a bonus given by a paper of uh, Professor Pirkowski. We found it in his paper uh, in Transaction of Moscow Mathematical Society. Uh, Arendt's Michael Anthelops was a paper, and um, uh, okay, to, it wasn't the full title, but uh, I'm just stating it for um, for for the reference, which tells us that we can have. A family of top of, of seminorms um, defining the topology of alpha, and such that this family of seminorms would will uh, fulfill this um, continuity condition that I am uh, marking here. And why I'm saying this this is crucial because this continuity condition is very well in the sense that it keeps the same seminorm QI uh, in both sides of our of our continuity inequality, and of course. Uh, this permits us to work on the quotient to take the alpha i, the quotient of alpha with respect to the kernel of the seminorm qi. This is a norm AB not by module. And with respect to alpha i, we can have a representation of alpha up to isomorphism of locally convex spaces um, with inverse limit of alpha i bar, where alpha i bar is the completion of the norm module alpha i with respect to the norm qi bar. Hence, we can go and descend our derivation delta to the derivation delta i, uh, going downwards from a b naught to the factor to, to the factor alpha i bar. Uh, of course, uh, we, we do that by composition with PI, the restricted derivation delta composition with PI, where PI is the projection module map. Now, by descending from alpha B0 to alpha I bar, we have in our hands the continuity by result, by the very well known result of ring rows. So, delta I is, uh, is continuous and Moreover, since we are having in our hands a commutative sister algebra, which is amenable, we can uh, say that the, the map from AB0 to the bidual alpha i would be inner and thus zero. This would happen for every i. So our derivation delta restricted to AB0 at the end of the day turns out to be zero. By this Weak reference, uh, we started with the restricted derivation and we have now that this restricted derivation is zero. What we want to do is now to ascend, to go upwards and to see why the, the, zero, deriva the zero restricted derivation can give us a zero derivation as a whole. Why delta, in other words, is zero. Now in doing so, this is described in the next bullet. We are we proved a more general result, which says that if you have an inner, if you have a derivation which is inner restricted in AB naught, in this sense, then you will have a derivation which is inner everywhere. Okay, so we did that by uh, 
uh, some series of uh, calculations, but the crucial part is that we started with a positive element in alpha, and we used the fact that we saw before that one plus x to the, the inverse element of one plus x is inside AB naught. So by doing calculations, we can have that our derivation D is inner uh, when we have a positive element. After done that, it is easy because every element of alpha can be represented as a linear combination of positive elements. So uh, we have established this bullet here, which means that from the innerness of the restricted derivation delta to AB naught, of course we are zero, so we are inner, we go to the innerness of the whole derivation delta. Thus we have uh, at the end of the day that delta is zero as we wished um, in the result, in, th in this first result, which describes us that the situation is the same when we have a commutative uh, GBSTR algebra with jointly continuous multiplication. Okay, um, then we, we were asking ourselves questions about continuity uh, of uh, of derivations because the previous one, the previous result has uh, had nothing to do with uh, with uh, sorry, just going back had nothing to do uh, with continuity. The setting was just for a complete community Gibster algebra. Okay, now uh, asking ourselves about continuity, um, we had in this paper in um, into in, in this paper we had the result. Again, partial, I must admit, but the derivation of a Fresse smooth nuclear GPSTR algebra is for sure continuous. Now, some explanation of the terms, because here, okay, Fresse, we know smooth and nuclear. Nuclear in GPSTR algebra setting means quite naturally that the underlying sister algebra B not is nuclear. Smooth. This is a, a, a term which describes the topology. And in general, if you have a locally convex algebra, uh, alpha, and a locally convex A by module X, the smoothness of the module actions are described through these two inequalities, which gives the continuity of the module actions. And it is the, the, the key uh, to describe smoothness is to retain the same semi-norm in both parts of the continuity um, conditions. Something that we saw happened also before, and that was the, 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 the initial impetus to, to try and see in a more general setting, if we outline this as a, a, a definition to be smooth, uh, what, we, what we would expect. And we were, were led with this proposition um, that we are now going to see. So smoothness and nuclearity are these two terms here in this slide. Examples of a smooth uh, GB star algebra and of a nuclear GB star algebra, since we uh, we brought into the table to uh, these two terms. So as for nuclearity of a GB star algebra, this is an example that comes from a paper of Inoue, Fragulopoulou, and White. Um, uh, and the setting was that uh, you have, we, we begin with a sister-like convex algebra. Sister-like convex algebra is an algebra and uh, whose uh, topology is described uh, by a family of semi-norms that have this condition, that satisfies these conditions, almost like being uh, process star. This is why we, 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 we call it sister-like. And uh, moreover, to, to, to be sister-like, you have to, um, you have to have tau dense bounded part alpha b. When we are in this setting, and every sister like convex algebra I just um, state here is a GB star algebra, something that was proved uh, by Noe and Kirsten. Uh, so if you have a sister like convex algebra and you take the matrices, Mn of alpha, um, the matrices is the completed with respect to the injective topology uh, tensor product MN of uh, C uh, tensor alpha. And this is a GBSTAR algebra. 
Yeah. This GB star algebra is an example of a nuclear GB star algebra in the sense that the bounded part of the matrices is uh, this nuclear sister algebra. Mm -hmm. The tensor product with respect to the maximum uh, norm uh, of uh, the n times n matrices or complex matrices times the bounded part of alpha. This is nuclear. So, and the nuclearity comes from the description of the topology given in the n times n matrix of alpha. I stated here some uh, details about this topology, which comes from the seminorms here for every matrix uh, xij. So the, the, the crucial fact is that this gives us a, a well-established uh, example of a nuclear JV star algebra, matrices over a sister-like convex algebra. Quite natural. Uh, now, uh, with respect to the smooth, um, with respect to the smooth Fresnel uh, star algebra, the example comes from a paper of um, uh, of. Uh, sorry, I'm just keeping the pages to to remind myself the names. Yes, it comes from the paper from of from Eindhoven and Kruszynski, and the setting is also quite natural because they begin. They want to build a GB star algebra. And to describe the GB star algebra that they built, we see this slide. They begin by a set of bounded self adjoint operators, call it R, which fulfill the, four, the following four um, conditions commutativity, for every two, you have a third above them. And for every element in this family, there is a B such that B square stands above alpha. From this R, they, they, they construct the GBS algebra how they take as the common dense domain that we said before, uh, the union of alpha H, H is the Hilbert space, and alpha is the union they take it over all alpha in the uh, family in this set R. And they equip this uh, set with the inductive limit topology. So the common dense domain is this L, uh, calligraphic R and X, an operator is called R bounded if X times alpha is bounded for every alpha from the family. So they form the vector space of all R bound linear operators, call it RB of H. And they will work, they will build their GB star algebra inside this set, inside this vector space, the vector space of all R bound linear operators. How they do that? Equip this vector space with seminorms like this, quite natural. Every x of alpha is bounded, so p alpha is just the norm of x alpha. And take, of course, uh, we can easily see that the set R that we initially uh, started with is inside R b of h, and they take the commutant of the set R. Well, the commut the, the R c is the commutant in this sense. So. The involution is as we see uh, below. And the uh, GB star algebra that they take is the uh, commutant of R. So the commutant of R, they show that it is a sequentially complete GB star algebra. Now, what we do is we focus our attention, we focused our attention to this, uh, to this paper, to this theorem, to this GB star algebra, and we said the seminorms defining the topology of uh, the commutant are uh, given, uh, the continuity is given here. So as we see here, we don't have smoothness. We don't have smoothness with respect to the seminorms P alpha, yet if we make an additional assumption, which is what I have noted here in the bullet that follows the theorem, and this assumption uh, reads as follows, for every alpha from the family R that we started with, with we suppose that we have another element Q from the family R such that alpha is Q times uh, itself. In a sense, it's like taking a projection support of alpha. Q is like the support of alpha. If we make this assumption, then it is quite easy to show that the seminorms P alpha defining the topology of this JB star algebra comitant that we saw before are actually giving us a smooth JB star algebra. The topology here would be smooth in this sense that we said before. 
okay? The P alpha remains also unaltered in the two parts of the inequality. Uh, so to conclude with our example of a smooth nuclear, uh, of a smooth GB star algebra is starting with, a, with an operator alpha between zero one, taking R one to be all nth roots of alpha together with the n powers of alpha, then construct the commutative von Neumann algebra M generated by R1, and for every x in M, Rx is the support. The support of x, the least projection, such that uh, this, uh, by definition, these uh, two equalities hold. So, as I said before, if we have now in our hands R2 to be the collection R1 together with the support for every element from R1, we end up by taking the commutant uh, and based on the theorem of Krusinski and Dijkhoven, we have in our hands a smooth first set GP star algebra. Uh, so the previous slides gives us a clue of examples of nuclear GP star algebras and smooth uh, GP star algebras. To, re to, to, to resume, uh, after giving these examples, the result that we wanted to prove uh, and we prove is that for every such fresse uh, smooth nuclear GP star algebra, the continuity of derivation is um, automatic. And I just noted here the uh, some details uh, that uh, at this point I am going to just skip uh, to uh, have the time to uh, to proceed. Yes. Take your time. As ah, okay. Takes. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Lemsen. Um. So, after having est established these two first results, we focused our attention. What happens if the um, a B naught is not just a sister algebra, is a W star algebra. Of course, something which happens quite in common in the sense that already discussed, the Arrhenius algebra L omega has A B naught to be a phenomenal, to be a W star algebra. A B naught is the L infinity zero one. Um, another example would be generalizing this Arrhenius algebra L omega of zero one and take L omega of a von Neumann algebra uh, with faithful finite normal trace tau. And now L omega M uh, comma tau is just the all LP M tau uh, algebras, uh, spaces, which is exactly the same, but now we are measuring with respect to the, to the, to the trace tau of XP is finite. So again, this is an example of a GB star algebra, L omega M tau, whose underlying uh, AB naught is the von Neumann algebra M itself. So we have plenty of examples that show us, show us that these are uh, common. Hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, so um, I just wanted to, to, to show now the the following. Before giving the definition of Gideon, which uh, talks about uh, locally measurable operators, the very nice and important thing in the, in the situation uh, where the GB star algebra has as a B not a W star algebra is the theorem from Chilin and Zakirov, which says as the following. Whenever you have a GB star algebra with AB not a W star algebra, then you are algebraically isomorphic to a, a subalgebra of the locally measurable operators uh, on AB not. So the, the situation is um, quite concrete because the locally measurable operators uh, are uh, defined by Eden. They are uh, concrete and we know things about them and I'm going to be more precise in the slides that uh, that come. Just to give um, a, a quick uh, uh, note, a quick uh, recap on the locally measurable operators. Uh, actually, we have a von Neumann algebra and um, measurable is an operator which is closed, affiliated with them, and such that 
of dense domain, of course, close to operator X with dense domain, and such that the one minus E lambda is finite for some lambda positive. Well, the lambda are the projections coming from the spectral decomposition of X, of absolute X. Now, locally measurable, we are if we have measurability for every XQN, where QN is a sequence of projections that tends to zero. If this happens for every N, from this sequence of projections, QN, central projections, then you are locally measurable. All the family of locally measurable operators will be described, noted by the LS of M. So, Chilin and Zakirov uh, cleared the ground and tell the, told us that you think of a JB star algebra with AB0 W star algebra, then you are star subalgebra of LS of AB0. So, to obtain results about derivations, when we are in the setting that our AB0 is a W star algebra, we may have a, an advantage in which sense? Just describing the proposition here, coming from a, a different paper, from another paper. This is proposition three. Um, so here we have a freset. Again, the freset, as you see, it is quite crucial that uh, uh, comes together in the results that we have described so far. A freset GP star algebra uh, with A, B, not W star algebra, then every derivation of such algebra is inner. We were able to, to, to show that. And of course, since it is inner, it would be also continuous coming from the um, continuity of the uh, of the multiplication. So here, uh, just describing some parts of the proof, I would like to say that we broke the proof into some into pieces. Uh, this is how I present it here also, starting with a rather technical um, result, the result in alpha, which describes as a more general situation, having a von Neumann algebra M with faithful finite neural trace and text complete locally convex M by module contained in LS of M. Such an X would sat will satisfy two conditions. Every semi-norm on X would uh, satisfy this inequality. And moreover, the second one would be that the, the, the topology tau prime on X would be stronger than the topology of convergence uh, locally in measure on X. Now, this topology, the tau LS of M, is a topology which uh, has to do with, um, which is described uh, via some uh, neighborhoods in here, in LS of M. It is a particular topology, but um, I haven't written uh, the, the, the neighborhoods here. Um, okay, but it is a topology char uh, characterizing uh, LS of M. Topology of convergence locally in measure. Okay, if our, uh, by module X, uh, by module with respect to von Neumann algebra satisfies these two conditions, and if we have a derivation from the whole uh, LS of M, such that um, its image uh, maps uh, the von Neumann algebra inside the module X, then we can show the continuity of our derivation delta with respect to the topology of convergence in measure. So that, that is the first result uh, towards the direction of proving the proposition. And um, what follows is breaking the, um, the, the proof of the proposition into parts, which means part B, we focus our attention in a Fresed GP star algebra with a faithful finite normal trace. Okay, this is our first step. If we have such a situation, we show that every derivation in A is inner and hence continuous. And how we do that? We step into, we base uh, onto the previous result uh, alpha, which means that we regard alpha, our whole algebra, as a bimodule over, locally convex bimodule over the von Neumann algebra M with jointly continuous module actions. So automatically property one, is granted, is given, uh, is fulfilled. What is to, uh, for one to show is that also we have condition two, which means that the, and this is what we are to going to, uh, to, to show, 
that the topology tau on alpha is stronger than the uh, topology of convergence locally measured. This can be done simply by, the, of course, regarding the identity map and showing that this continues. Um, so we are supposing alpha ni converging tau to zero and alpha ni converging tau LSM to alpha. And um, we are passing to the real parts of alpha ni tending, call it Bn, tending to zero, and the real part uh, Bn tending to B. So what is important here, we're passing to the real part and the imaginary part, and we are, we are going to show that B uh, is zero. And of course, with the imaginary part, the same. So um, what is important here to know is we have Bn tending to zero, sorry, tending to B. Uh, so with respect to tau LSM, so Bn star Bn tending to B square. What we're going to show is that B square is zero. And how we do that is by regarding the positive cone of alpha and saying that this positive cone is tau closed. Now, tau closedness of the positive cone is something that Dixon in his paper pointed out that will happen if we have some uh, conditions. And in the setting that we have here, uh, that alpha is a fresse, GB star algebra, the conditions set by Dixons are fulfilled. And to give you just an idea, the crucial role here for alpha, uh, for the positive cone of alpha to be tau closed is, uh, uh, is um, played by the fact that alpha has hypercontinuous multiplication because it is fresse. So that would equip us with a subsequent CN, subsequent CN of uh, BN astro BN, such that this inequality holds. Okay, this inequality here holds. From this inequality, we can pass to a subsequent C kappa of N of CN that tends to zero with respect to the topology of locally convergence in measure. That would uh, tell us that B square is zero, so B is zero, giving us also the second condition, that of the continuity of the identity map. So our derivation, delta, uh, delta from LS, delta bar from LSM to LSM is continuous from the previous result. But now we're working with delta. Delta is from alpha to alpha. Okay, it is our uh, our algebra alpha that we start for, from. How we can extend it to LSM? This is something that was done. Uh, very nice result. This uh, reference is from in a paper of, uh, if I recall where, of uh, um, uh, Bear, uh, Sukochev and um, Chilin, uh, they did this job. They said that you can extend. So the extension delta bar is continuous by alpha. Delta bar is also inner. Again, this uh, reference is paper of uh, Bear and uh, Chilin and uh, Sukochev. From which we say we, we uh, end up uh, having our initial derivation uh, delta to binner and hence continuous. I will stop here with respect to this proof. Uh, this is the crucial step. Then the proof goes on by taking also the other uh, possibilities of your algebra uh, to be uh, to have a B not of B type three, of B type two, and of B type one. So we are breaking our, our proof into pieces. But the crucial piece was the uh, point that I described before. And uh, as you saw, and I, I must admit, it, uh, the, the novelty is not uh, great in the sense that deep results that we uh, uh, take advantage of are uh, given in this reference in the work of uh, Ber, Sukochev, and uh, uh, Chilin uh, that uh, worked and I think other researchers too, uh, like Kudra Bergenov and uh, Albedeiro, that worked and provided us with result, results uh, of derivations on the locally measurable operators or, or on a phenomenon algebra M. So, um, 
I'm going to, to skip the, the, the next details of this particular proof. I just gave you the, uh, the, the, the overview of it. Uh, the next example um, is an example of, uh, uh, of um, GB star algebra, which is commutative, uh, yet it has a non-zero derivation, uh, which means that uh, the situation is different from the sister algebra case. So we can have uh, possibly a GB star algebra being commutative and having yet uh, a, a non-zero derivation. Um, just to give an outline of the example, uh, it would be uh, in the tracks of the representation theorem that we saw, Allen representation theorem with the functions, in which sense, starting with the measure space, with all these nice properties that I am writing, with respect to the measure, with respect to X being a compact Hauser space, and taking n max of X to be the continuous functions on X, possibly taking the value infinity on a nowhere dense set. This is why I say that it is in, on the tracks of the representation theorem of Allen. So n max, n max of X can be thought as uh, the multiplication operators MF acting on L2 of the measure space. It is an extended sister algebra. It is an extended sister algebra over the continuous functions on X. And the common dense domain D0 can be thought to be uh, the set of all finite valued functions having compact support. As we described before, we can equip it with the what topology, with the weak operator topology, making it a GBster algebra clearly commutative, yet if we endow X, uh, sorry, if we thought, thought of X as being totally disconnected and we endow the, the uh, closed and open sets, uh, the, the Boolean algebra of closed and open sets with certain particular properties being complete and not sigma distributive, then it is this paper from Chilin and Levitina which says that if your Boolean algebra has these properties, then you have a non-zero derivation delta from n max of x to n max of x. So this is an example of a mm, non-zero derivation of a commutative GB star algebra. Um, I don't know if I, if I have time to continue. Please tell me when. Uh... No, no, you, you have time. As okay, you okay, thank you. So, so next, I'm just uh, going to, to, to go through this question, which was uh, another question that we had is, as we looked before in the beginning of, uh, of our talk, we said that if you are in a sister algebra alpha and you have a derivation, then you, you say that this derivation is partial in the sense that you go to the biduals, the von Neumann algebra, uh, and there you have innerness of the derivation in the von Neumann algebra, so your initial derivation on the sister algebra is, is partial. Our question was, is something uh, of this kind feasible in the setting of GB star algebras? And um, of course, having proved before that every derivation of a Freset GB star algebra with bounded part of von Neumann algebra is inner, if we could extend the derivation delta uh, from alpha to alpha to the biduals, to a derivation delta uh, to stars, then, and if we could say that the bidual of alpha is a GB star algebra over the bidual of AB naught, which is clearly a von Neumann algebra, then we could take advantage of, advantage of our previous result and say that this delta uh, double star is inner. Hence, our initial delta is partial. So the work to be done is starting with a derivation delta from a Freset GB star algebra. Try, we tried and see if we could um, prove that the bidual of alpha is a Freset GB star algebra over AB naught, double dual. This is what we, uh, we asked ourselves. The result that we, that we obtained is this one, is this theorem, which says that, yes, you can have what I described before, meaning starting with a tau continuous derivation on a Freset GB star algebra, and yes, your derivation would be spatial 
with uh, the spatiality implemented by an element of the bidual of alpha. As you will, you have probably already so in the description of the theorem, in the wording of the theorem, the algebra is not just for a set of star algebra, has also to have other two uh, properties. It has to be countably dominated and also an AO star algebra. Okay, I know that this is perhaps not great in the sense that we impose ourselves with more conditions, but, but they were conditions that we needed in our course of proving uh, this result. And okay, it, it was the best that we, uh, that we, uh, uh, we could have uh, in that time. Uh, so just to give you the uh, basic ingredients of the wording of the previous theorem, um, I would like to, to briefly uh, state what is an AO star algebra and what uh, this countably dominated term refers to. Um, to begin with, the thing is that in the whole in, in, in the whole uh, paper, in this whole paper, in this uh, whole theorem to prove it, we focused our attention not to alpha, but to the representation of alpha, to the to the P alpha, to the algebra P alpha, where P is the universal, call it, in a sense, a representation that we began with in our talk. So we focus our attention on this algebra P alpha. This is an algebra of, um, uh, this is a star, a starts of algebra of L dagger of D. Uh, with L dagger of D, we know that we uh, describe the closable linear maps from D to D, where D is uh, um, where D is a subset of uh, the domain of definition of the adjoint, and the adjoint also maps D inside D. This is what the dagger D is. So uh, our algebra alpha represented via P, uh, we have P alpha to be a subalgebra of a dagger D. Now, for any star subalgebra of a dagger of D, such an algebra is a NAO star algebra if it is algebraically and topologically isomorphic to a complete star algebra B of L dagger of D. Complete with respect to which topology? With respect to the, the topology tau of D, described by these semi-norms, which is the semi-norms that um, resemble the, uh, uh, the, the, okay, this is the supreme taking over the uh, inner products alpha xi eta, where xi and theta comes from bounded subsets of D, bounded subsets M with respect to the graph topology. So this happens uh, uh, with respect to the notion of AO star algebra and the countably dominated part. Um, for this, we referred to papers describing this topology that I'm now going to, uh, to state. This was paper from Jerzak, DF spaces. Uh, this was also papers uh, the, the, from Araki, which uh, we, who's, who has done uh, a great work on uh, uh, on these uh, things. Uh, just to describe what is this topology, uh, what is the countably dominated uh, term, um, starting with an a, a, a with a star, star subalgebra of a dagger D, call it alpha. Um, we form the uh, the spaces eta of alpha, which which is just all the um, operators being alpha, such that our alpha of B is finite, where our alpha is this norm. Okay, resembles the operator norm. Okay, the supremum of this quotient. Now, every such eta alpha as shown before, is a norm space with a norm with respect to the norm rho alpha. And if we have a collection and also the subspaces uh, of all eta B with B a positive operator is an inductive system of norm spaces. So one then considers the inductive limit topology of the system of norm spaces. And if it happens that uh, our topology and we're talking about the topology rho. This is the topology rho, the inductive limit topology of all these um, norm spaces. And if it happens that the inductive limit topology is described, can be constructed by a sequence of these subspaces eta alpha m, then we're talking about countably dominated. 
our algebra is countably dominated. So this is the setting that we needed in order to prove the result that I described before. We needed our algebra alpha to be countably dominated, and also we needed our uh, GP star algebra to be AO star algebra. Uh, uh, it uh, the P of alpha, the representation of, of alpha through, uh, through, uh, through P, to be uh, a complete uh, star subalgebra of L dagger of D. Uh, I just want briefly to, 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 to pinpoint some, some parts here and, and, and there of, uh, of our proof. Um, just to, to state a, li a lemma here, which says that um, the countably dominated uh, algebra P alpha that we needed, how it is, uh, uh, what, what results, if our algebra P alpha is countably dominated, then this results in the positive cone P alpha plus to be normal. With respect to the topology that we described before, with respect to the row topology, this is something which gives us a clue or an image of uh, what happens with, between countably dominated that we, uh, uh, that we needed, uh, that we assumed, and the positive cone of P alpha. Uh, okay, the construction. Briefly, I would uh, I would describe some parts of this construction. So we started with an alpha and our derivation delta. We would like to extend it to the uh, to the a by dual. Uh, naturally, as in the Banach case, we take the square, the product of the, of the, any two by uh, functionals from the by dual uh, by the square, the square which is uh, the, the, the natural definition of such a product between the bi-duals. And uh, it happens and it is uh, a very good thing that uh, the A bi-dual with respect to tau s, tau s is the topology of, un of uh, convergence uh, on bounded sets of uh, the bi-dual, uh, is a Freset topological algebra. The multiplication, the product uh, square is separately continuous, and uh, our A by dual is a Freset topological algebra. Now, the whole consideration uh, of um, of proving our result having to do to having to do how to pass the information from alpha to p alpha, as I said in in the beginning uh, of the proof, and this transferring of uh, of information from alpha to p alpha was done through the consideration of, of the map that I call here J, which is the simple map taking any pair of elements from D and map it to the functional omega psi of eta. Very natural one. So we proved that this J is, uh, uh, is continuous. Okay, when uh, we, uh, we equip D with the graph topology and P alpha dual with the dual topology. So, this was crucial because we uh, we use this J. Uh, how by continuity we extend it, and we can extend it to the uh, completed uh, uh, pro uh, tensor product uh, with respect to the projective topology into the by dual. Uh, excuse me, into the dual, uh, and this is uh, a known to map. So after doing so, after doing that, we end up having this proposition, which tells us if we make the composition of the P by dual with the dual of J, J is the map that we saw before, we have in our hands a map, which is algebraic morphism from the by dual, alpha by dual, to the weak closure of P of alpha. And this is what we wanted, this is what we needed in order to pass information from the by dual of alpha to the weak closure. All that comes after that, and I'm going to skip the details, had to do with this transferring uh, of information from here to here. This transferring, which had a lot of details, okay, and ended up in proving that um, at the end of the day, the theorem for a secondably dominated GP star algebra, when you go to the bidual, you have uh, with multiplication, the product that we saw before, you still have in your hands a Freset GB star algebra. So you can extend your derivation in the bidual, and you will take and you will take inner derivation delta 
uh, on the Baidu. So you will have a uh, spatial derivation, your initial one, on your Fresnel Jupiter algebra alpha. And your, it's your theory. Yes, yes. We, no, no, it, it also. Is, so from modesty. So, yes, so, yes, it is, uh, it is our theorem. <laughs> this was so, in Studia uh, Mathematica uh, paper. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I'm skipping the details. Um, and to, to pass uh, to, the, to the part which I said before, this was more or less things that we did uh, with respect to derivations having the whole domain, the whole algebra. If we uh, pay attention, which is also very crucial to derivations having densely defined domains, the three bullets describe uh, things that we know. The first one tells us that if you are in the sister algebra and you have a closed derivation uh, densely defined, then the, uh, the unit of the algebra would be inside the domain. This is Kissing and Schulman uh, in the 90s. The second one that we know is that we, if we have a Banach algebra with identity and a closed derivation delta from the whole algebra. Sorry, here I made a mistake. It is the, the domain is D delta, densely defined. Uh, then the spectrum are the same of any element X in D delta, either regarded with respect to the whole algebra or either regarded with respect to the densely defined domain D delta. And this is again Kissing and Schulman. And the third result is the uh, well known that if you have a closed derivation on a sister algebra, the domain of definition is closed under analytic functional calculus. And this is a very well known result of uh, Bratelli and Robinson. So just uh, to, to, these were the three, uh, the, the, the three well known results. And on, on these results, we posed our questions, what happened in our setting, what happened in the derivations of Jupiter algebras? Do we still uh, can we still provide ourselves with answers either yes or no with respect to, to bullet one, bullet two, and bullet three? Just to give you an idea, what we have in our hands. Um, the next theorem. This is Allen theorem. Allen's theorem. <laughs> I have not uh, yes. I have not uh, noted the author, but this is Alan's theorem. And this is the description of what functional calculus is when you are in a pseudo-complete locally convex algebra. It is on the track of the functional calculus of the Banach algebra. Okay, and you see here that you have um, this, um, uh, this holomorphism, taking any function holomorphic on the spectrum, uh, giving it, uh, mapping it to an element f of x, which is in the bounded alpha node that we started our talk. Uh, how? Uh, via the integral, of course, this integral. Um, okay, we have three cases here because it may happen that our x is bounded or not bounded, either inside a node or not inside a node. And this is the difference with respect to the Banach case. If it is not inside a node, Alan said that our functional calculus uh, would uh, have also a part, besides the integral, a part that would pay attention to the value of the function on infinity. Okay, so this is the functional calculus that we want to see if our domain of definition of our derivation is closed under the functional calculus. And we have obtained this result. This is in another paper that we have, which says that, again, complete GB star algebra with jointly continuous multiplication, starting with the derivation with closed, possibly unbounded, with densely defined domain. Then you are closed under functional calculus, the functional calculus that we described before, when if you have these two conditions. First, that the, the, the unit is inside the domain, and also inside the domain of definition of, of definition of your derivation, you have all the inverses lambda one minus x for the lambda which are in the resolvent, in the complement of the spectrum of, uh, of x. Okay, this is something that we obtained. I have written the some bullets to give us an idea of how we, we, we did that. I'm going to see.
keep them for the time being. Um, of course, someone can say, do we have such a derivation that fulfills the previous two conditions? A very easy observation, but because I, I, I noted here, just to give us a, a sense of what happens. Yes, of course, we can have a derivation that fulfills the previous two conditions simply by, by uh, regarding a derivation delta closed, um, that it is a, that is a generator of a continuous one parameter group. If this happens, then you have one, the unit, the unit inside D of delta, and also you have, you, we can easily prove that we have also all these elements for any, uh, for all these lambdas inside the domain of definition. So just an easy observation to tell us that we are in a, a, a ground that can, that it is feasible, of course. Okay, uh, next theorem, someone might tell, uh, might uh, uh, ask, when do we have the unity inside the domain? A sufficient condition, yet of course not necessary. Uh, we have obtained in this theorem, which tells us that your unit would be inside the domain when, if we have such a dense, a, a density result, the, the um, intersection of the domain with the C star algebra A, B naught, lying inside the GP star algebra is dense in A, B naught. Uh, as I said, sufficient yet not uh, necessary. Um, Okay, uh, the next uh, example, just uh, I will briefly say what it uh, depicts. It depicts a situation in which we have um, a derivation of a GB star algebra, uh, which the, whose domain of definition, the delta, does not contain the identity. Okay, so this is an example uh, which tells us that situation might be different with respect to the sister algebra setting. Okay. Um, not going to details in this example, it has a lot, and I would like to stress uh, uh, on uh, subsequent results, but just to state that this example says that, look, the situation is not, uh, is not the same like in the sister algebras. Okay. Uh, second question. When do we have, this is what we would like to find out, when do we have the first um, property of our theorem? That is, when all these inverses are in the domain of definition, this can be rephrased, uh, this can be implied by the coincidence of the spectrum. And some results that we obtained with respect to the coincident of the spectrum is the following uh, two uh, results. I'm sorry if uh, I'm writing theorem, theorem. I'm not claiming that they are all that important, the results. I wanted to write propositions, yet I found difficulty in the program in the LaTeX. Uh, I was writing proposition and they were not properly uh, produced in the, in the program. So, I, I want sorry. I wanted just to make this uh, this comment. So, what we obtained as results? First, uh, first result: uh, if we are in a complete locally m convex algebra, and we have a closed unbounded derivation with the the, the unit inside the domain, then we prove that the, the the spectrums are the same. Coincidence of the spectrum for any element x in the delta. This is for a complete locally m convex, though. Okay. Uh, our GB star algebras are more general in, in the sense that they might not be M convex. The seminars might, might not be sub multiplicative. So, what we obtained next in this paper is that if we have a complete GB star algebra with jointly continuous multiplication and continuous inversion, okay, we're losing here generality. Okay. Yet, the, we can prove then that the, the spectrums are the same in this setting, in this situation. So, next comes, we are alleviating the assumption of continuity of inversion. We are putting it aside in the next theorem, in the next result that I'm going to show. 
which is this one. We are alleviating the assumption of continuity of inversion. So we are saying that for a complete GB star algebra with jointly continuous multiplication, any closed bound in derivation delta with one inside its domain, the spectrums will be the same. Uh, sigma alpha of x would be the same, uh, sigma d delta of x, but we are allevi alleviating the assumption of uh, continuity of inversion, but we can only prove, we can only prove then the uh, coincidence of the spectrums with respect to every normal element of the domain of definition of the derivation. <clears throat> okay, and um, I would like to to close the sorry if I'm skipping some um, just wanting to to focus. Okay, uh, I would like just to to finish up the uh, the results that we have obtained um, by uh, describing by by saying a few words about the generators of group of automorphisms, since of course they are uh, interconnected uh, with uh, derivations uh, and. Uh, here in this slide, I'm just giving some uh, notations about what uh, uh, we, we have a group of uh, linear uh, continuous uh, operators from X into itself. They are um, equicontinuous if this thing uh, with respect to the seminorms happens, continuity in this sense. And the family of linear operators T of T would be sigma mi then, uh, sigma zero semigroup if the three conditions uh, are fulfilled. Okay, so this uh, theorem, which is the um, this is the Hilaeusida theorem for uh, complete locally convex spaces, tells us when uh, when a densely defined operator is an infinitesimal generator of uh, a semigroup of the form that we described before. Um, this theorem tells us that. Uh, to, to, to have an uh, infinitesimal generator, it must be that this uh, family, this sequence of operators, uh, are equicontinuous. Okay, so by, by, uh, by having this uh, Heliosida theorem, uh, we generalize the notion of dissipat dissipative um, and call an operator a T. Uh, on a complete locally convex space X, densely defined operator T, to be dissipative if for every X in, in the domain of definition of T, uh, you have a functional in the bidual that gives, prescribes the uh, value uh, P alpha, the seminorm P alpha of X to the, to, to the uh, element X and fulfills also this continuity condition for every Y in X. And whose real part of f, uh, of f on Tx is non-positive. Uh, this is what a dissipative operator in the complete locally convex uh, setting is. So um, the next theorem is the um, can be thought of uh, a Loomer-Phillips uh, theorem for complete locally convex spaces, and it, it it simply says that that if you have a generator of a, an equicontinuous semigroup of linear operators on X, uh, this operator is dissipative. Um, and its range, the range of uh, I minus T, is the whole uh, uh, of X. What about the converse? Uh, and this is uh, described in the, in the next uh, result. The converse would be starting with a dissipative operator T, Can it be a generator of an equicontinuous semigroup and this for a complete locally convex space? And the answer is yes, if your range uh, is the whole of X for, uh, of lambda times yota minus T for all lambda uh, positive. So to proving this, we based, of course, on the uh, previous two theorems that I said, uh, Hille Yoshida theorem for complete locally convex spaces and this one, which is the Loomer-Phillips theorem, actually for uh, complete locally convex spaces. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, the next 
the, the next slides, I'm not going to, to go into the next slides. I'm just going to, to say that this is work in progress that we're doing now, uh, trying to see what happens with respect to maximal ideals on uh, GB star algebras. We shall be so able going to, to see you yes? next time. Yes. I mean, uh, the next year. It okay. What you say, okay. we would like to hear. This. Thank you very much. I would like to stop here and thank you very much for your time and uh, for your attention. So um, let us thank our speaker. And now brief questions and brief comments, please. Uh, well, um, I have a brief question. So um, um, the fact that uh, all derivations of an algebra of an algebra are inner uh, means exactly that the first uh, Hochschild cohomology is uh, trivial. So the question mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, maybe do you have any results uh, about vanishing of uh, higher Hochschild cohomology? <laughs> Very interesting uh, question. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, we uh, we. Up to now, we didn't have, we don't have such kind of results with respect to cohomology groups of higher uh, derivations. Yet, it is something that we would like to, to to study, hopefully in the in the future. But we we don't have such results. So we shall wait. <laughs> yes. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, yes. Maria. Yes. Yanis, uh, I would like. To ask you, uh, you had uh, in one of the theorems of the results yes. that you presented, um, you needed your Frechet GB star algebra to be AO star algebra. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, we know uh, by a result of Schmidgen that the Frechet GB star algebra is an AO star algebra. Um, when uh, the cone of positive elements is normal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you have an extra also condition. So maybe you could uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, suppose that uh, the a cone of positive elements is normal and then to have immediately from this theorem mm -hmm that uh, your algebra is an A-Oster algebra. I, I see. So you mean that perhaps we can alleviate the assumption of A-Oster algebra based on the fact that it is such an algebra if the cone is normal? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. I, yeah, don't know, I, I, I don't know if it is uh, affected uh, or uh, you involve it somehow in to the... To tell you the truth, it is it is an interesting comment, but to tell you the truth, I had I have to go back and see exactly the uh, in the in and out of the proof to see yes. exactly where and how we we use the yes. the AO star algebra assumption. But yes. it is something to give us a thought uh, that perhaps we can go back and see uh, the, the proof uh, with uh, yeah. with your comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Other question? Oh, sorry. No, no, finish with the question and then I, I will come back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so other questions. Yes, yes. Ah, you will have uh, a little to say after questions. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if there is no questions, or there are, Anar is silent, usually. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, well, uh, well, can I ask you actually? So, um, well, is it true that if you get any sister algebra on Hilbert space and get this weak completion with respect to seminoles that are given by means of couples of vectors, um, mm -hmm. as a result, we are getting GB star algebra. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So Dixon's representation theorem is telling you reverse, right? Every GB star algebra can be realized like by means of its bounded part and the same seminars, is it? Is it right? Yes, you are. You are absolutely right. It, it it tells us that a locally convex algebra can can be equipped with a GP star algebra topology, if and only if I it see. is 
isomorphic to uh, to an extent it's sister algebra. So in that case, if you use the same semi norms, you are getting Banach by modules, right, of a bounded plot, and it's going to be inverse limit of this star. Is it true? Uh, to tell you the truth, we well, had this uh, construction, but in 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 some cases, I. I I don't think that we we were able to find uh, this um, representation as an inverse limit in every case. I see. Well, I, look, the, the, these seminomes actually they, they provide this uh, Banach bimodule structure, right? Mm -hmm. So they exactly possess this property. Like, um, not uh, they are multiplicative, but exactly bimodule structure. Mm -hmm. So you know, and in your in your proof of the conduction uh, concerning the you know derivation of the cumulative GB star algebra, so as I guess that your your that use the Pirkowski semi norms, the exactly the same semi norms, am I right? Okay. So the problem you're using exactly the same semi norms, or option you can use the Dixon representation and then use the semi norms, and get the same result. As I okay. guess, I, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> It is a it is a very insightful observation, and I'm going to to to, to see if this is uh, exactly the case. And thank you for. Yeah, well, would be nice something like that. And, uh, so GB star algebra exactly inverse limit of sort of um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by modules over. Yes, it is an insightful power. observation. I haven't exactly thought about it, but uh, now you give me uh, <laughs> a clue to, sure. to to go back and see. Oh yes, yes, okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so yeah. now. Since questions are over, uh, the um, professor Fragulapulu will <laughs> have some enlightening remarks. But I don't know if you see me. Do you see me? Yes. 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 yes? Ah. Oh. Yes. 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 And we, we so, see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is advertisement. Yes, yeah. this is an advertisement of uh, our book on GB star algebras uh, by uh, Inoue, Weicht, and Zaragas. Yeah. So um, there is a lot of stuff about GB star algebras, but nothing about derivations. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. This is a work. This is a work published uh, this year, this year, so, so two three months uh, ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, be on alert. 2022, it was. <laughs> yes. Yes. Published. Very, very, very good uh, information. Uh, very, <laughs> very good. Okay. Now, so uh, let us thank again our speaker for a very a competent, interesting, and very well presented talk. So let us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. And um, thank you, Jens. Yes. Uh, thank everybody present. Next time, next uh, will be uh, Alexei Perkovsky, who was mentioned here. <laughs> um, yes. And his title will be what, Alyosha? Uh, flat uh, topological modules and uh, a new version of the Tor functor. Yes, so so Tor. You see, you asked about second cohomology, and here is even Tor. Yes. Okay. So I hope to see us our nice company next time, next week, next Friday. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.